I'm out of breath because I just hiked a half mile all uphill in some very, very deep snow. But I think it's going to be worth it because one of the largest, most powerful snow moving machines in the entire world is about ready to come around that bend. I'm talking about this, the last line of defense for the Union Pacific Railroad in the Sierra. It's called a rotary snowplow. This gigantic snowblower hasn't been used since 2019 and is saved for only the snowiest of winters when there is no other way to keep the track open. And it's also at this moment I realize I'm in trouble. Did you hear that beep of me stopping to record on a different camera? I'm rushing at this moment to toss my hat and gloves down the road because I know I'm about to be buried. This blower can throw snow up to 300 feet and I am well within that range. But I didn't come this far to not get the shot, so I stand and brace as long as I can. about snow blast, but I am able to quickly clear the snow from the lens and try and finish the shot. I just got absolutely rocked by the, the spray from that massive train that just came through. Wow, <laughs> what an experience. I had to keep it going though. I kept the camera rolling as best I could, got the snow cleared as quickly as I could. It was like being in a, a waterfall. It was like stepping underneath a, underneath a waterfall, but it was snow. Wow, what an experience. <laughs> that was worth the half mile hike up this road. Oh my gosh, what an incredible piece of machinery. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm officially a train chaser now. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you can see my gloves, my hat. I tried to throw them out. I had them initially placed here. I didn't think it was going to spray that far, but man, oh man. Woo, that was a lot exactly like standing underneath a waterfall, but it was like chunks of snow and I was just getting pelted. Like it was like the, you're on the losing end of the uh, snowball fight in Elf. Like it's getting pounded. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> oh man, that was so worth it. So worth it. The railroad calls the crew that works to keep the 245 miles of track clear from Reno, Nevada to Roseville, California, the Sierra Snow Fighters. And it's been a battle since the first track was laid in the 1800s. This is an old snow plow here, but look at this one. This is a guy named McIver down in Truckee, California, and he was the blacksmith down there. But he made this is on track, but look the blower that he's got in front of it, if you can see it through there. Yeah. But, and, and the thing, as I was told, did work, you know. And up there is a rotary snowplow from SP Railroad. They still run three of those, the railroad does. And, but I was showing you guys, you were talking earlier how, how it all started with snowplows, or the, the rotaries, because the railroads who really started, and it started because of this on Donner Summit. Here's a photo here. And what this shows is, this is all wooden shed. It went for 40 miles across the Sierras. And it was a railroad in a shed, is what it was. But high maintenance to take care of it. But when they first built the railroad, they thought they could hire lots of people and just shovel it off. Well, they found out, wait a minute, that didn't work. So they started using snowplows. One of them was called a bucker snowplow. And so they would push it off, but that you could only push it so far. So that wasn't working. So then they came up with, with the rotary snowplow up there. And that's in the, in the 1890s that they had some rotary snowplows. So it goes way back, but the railroad is the one that first started because there were no highways and no equipment to do it out on the highway. Then when the highways started to become proficient, they took the rotaries off of the railroad and put them on the trucks and stuff, opened the highways. That's, 
What, what did it? If you can state the obvious real quick on, on this sh railroad shed, explain to, to people who, again, never really experienced this, what the thought okay. was behind well, that. Well, the railroad across the Sierras at, at 7,000 feet of elevation, when, when, when they decided to build that railroad, they didn't think there was going to be that much snow. They thought, oh, yeah, we can shovel it off, we'll get rid of it. Well, that didn't work. It just started burying, 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 so the railroad could not keep in operation. So they had to figure some way. So the only thing they could come up with was snow sheds. These are all wooden here. Later on, they went to concrete. But the wooden sheds are what did it, and it's kind of unique. This picture here that you see, there's a guy standing there, and he's the lookout. And he's looking at what you see in this big photo here. And if he saw a fire in the shed, he would tele telephone down. And down at the railroad tracks, they had a telegraph. And they had three or four fire trains stationed at various places. So they would radio for the fire train. But some of the places in the shed itself, you can't see it in this photo. But this particular piece of shed is on wheels. So that various places, they could roll the shed apart to keep the fire from going through the whole thing. So they went up here, did it. Then they found with the high maintenance and the fire and everything, they, they started to do it with tractors. They started pushing the snow off. And that worked fine. But then the rotaries came along. They got better, more efficient, and that helped to keep it over. Now out here, right in downtown Soda Springs, they've got five or six piston bullies. They've got seven or eight D7 cats out there, John Deere cats. I mean, they, and they're working all the time. The railroad has to stay open, and they can't let the snow, but they don't let it get behind. Early on, before they had these piston bully machines and, and uh, ski doo machines that move a lot of snow, it was a guy named Jim Dobus, and he might bring 25, 30 cats, and they would be out here just pushing snow, pushing snow. That railroad had to be kept open. So, How long were the sheds in use before the rotary? Uh, oh, probably for 60, 70 years. Oh, yeah. In, in various places. So most of like the 1800s. Yeah, the rotaries weren't that efficient early on and, and weren't many of them. And when did they stop being used, the, the sheds, and then oh, the rotaries took over? The, rot the, the sheds quit being used when I first moved up here in the 50s. They started dismantling a lot of the wooden sheds. Then they started using caterpillar tractors to mm -hmm. push the snow and help that and they would use the rotary but the rotary could only move the snow from the railroad itself the tracks that didn't get rid of it on the sides so some way shape and form they had to get get rid of the snow on the side of the road the only way they could do that is by pushing it they use the yeah. spreaders too right well they had the, the spreaders yes you yeah. thanks for saying that but, which go out there about 40 feet that but that only worked so much because it, once it got too much out there, it, it didn't work because it had derailed the spreader machine and all that. It just, snow is powerful. Snow is so powerful to get on one side of a building and it'll push it over. People don't think about that. They think of snow, oh, it's just, snow is light. Uh-uh. It can, it can do lots of damage. Cars get buried in the snow all winter long and when you come back, the thing might be three feet tall, just squashed right down. So, it's strong stuff. You can't say the train companies haven't been creative in their fight from the wooden tunnels and even mole people. That's right, mole people. The hardy mole people of Norden. These were all the railroad workers and their, their houses would get totally covered in the winter. They couldn't see out of them. And that's where they lived. They had tunnels off of the highway. The tunnel would go down and tunnels to their houses. So they, they were called the mole people. But that was big time. In that place, Norton, at one time, we had over 200 people living there for the, working for the railroad. Now there's not one, not one person. When did that stop? Oh, God, it's... I when, see the date. This is 82, so 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And that was, it was still lots of people at that time. The alternative, if the track isn't clear for freight, is Interstate 80. And let me show you how that goes most storms.
and this is how problems on I-80 happen. Trucks don't have enough momentum, even with chains, to make it up. And they just hold traffic up and it becomes like a domino effect. There's one, two, three, four semis now stuck trying to make it up Donner Pass. I doubt it's going to be successful. That rope looks like it's put together with tape and bubble gum. I'm not confident in his not tying ability. He said he had a chain, but actually what he has is a tire chain that he's going to somehow attach to the back of the truck <laughs> to the tow rope that just snapped twice. He's gonna tie that tire chain to that tow rope that just snapped twice, then attach it to a semi rig. And I'm just gonna stand back. The car behind me stopped on the front of me and I just avoid to hit and I stop and it's no way. I have chains and everything. But... Here, back up because this is... Yep, I'm sorry. Let That's all right. Me. All right. Because it's kind of scary. scary. I, I have a bit of chains. With this one you can do damage if, if the chain breaks. Yeah. Do you want me to bring it? Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Bring your, bring your chains. Oh, he might have momentum. Where are you from? I'm from India. India. Punjab. Punjab. Yeah. Do they have snow in Punjab? No. <laughs> <laughs> The, the guy with the car, he yeah. stopped on the front and I have to stop to not hit him yeah. and uh, I just change my line and I stop and, and I'm still here. And did these guys come after you to get stuck or what was there? Which one? This truck and the truck no, that was No, he here. was on the front of me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they are already stuck? I guess, but uh, I, I can pass it if, if, yeah, if you can stop at me. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. How did you get around him? The, the car. He gets around me. <laughs> oh, he backed around. He back up, yeah, he back up. Okay. It's like, a, do you know dominoes? Yeah. It's like dominoes. I play those. One, <laughs> yeah, one falls and the other falls afterwards. I mean, it's... It's a struggle, and this year might be the biggest since the 1950s. Over 60 feet has fallen in this part of this year so far, the second most in recorded history. And still, the most important power tool for many is manpower. Please hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you know when I upload my next video, part two, I follow these Sierra Sherpas onto one of hundreds of roofs they've worked on this winter. And I will show you what I believe to be the snowiest neighborhood in the entire Sierra, nicknamed by Mark Twain himself in the 1800s, the Ice Lakes. Plus, we'll follow that legendary rotary snowplow into Soda Springs. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching.